Hello, my name is Tom Sloughler. This is my LES presentation. The topic that I chose for this presentation was touchscreens, how they come about, what are their futures, and what do we currently use them for? Well, in order for us to understand more about the touchscreens, we have to more understand about the past. In order for us to understand the past, it will help us better understand what's going on for the future. Touchscreens have been around since the early 1960s. A person by the name of E.A. Johnson made the first touchscreen for to be used <clears throat> in radar for air traffic control. At this time, he actually used a one-touch system to where you could use the pen or anything and done whatever you needed to do or to, uh, adjusting the bars or whatever for it. Some other people I took this idea and also applied it to music to where you had a little keyboard, a little monitor, and you used a little pen, touch the screen, and to there then make the synthesized sound. So that's kind of new for them back at that time, but now it's almost like the norm. For example, the phone that I'm using right now to record this presentation, it's a Galaxy S4. Everything's touchscreen on. Everything. So, what else can we learn from the past? Well, back in 1983, oh no, 19, 1972, there was a system called Plato. Plato 4 was the first notable one because this is what the University of Illinois was using to teach their kids over there with. And I use the term loosely kids because, well, let's face it, everything that has a new gadget for all little kids. But anyway, what the Plato System 4 did was to where you, the user, Write a bunch of questions on the screen, and you sit there and touched the screen, and it worked. Those were the first stages of touchscreen technology. So, what can we learn from it now? All right. Also, that radar system was in use until 1994 and it still is an innovation for its time because it's been around for a really long time for the first science of touch screen. Now, the Plato system was developed in the 1960s and there were other Plato systems but the Plato 4 was the most notable one for all the stuff that it did at that time. In 1983, some people put together called Video Place in 1983. And what it was was an optical track to where you could sit there and track your fingers and everything on it. And it was the first multi touch system. So you can actually use more than one finger or pen or whatnot that you could use on it. This also uh, helped create, because since you could use your hands, this also helped create gesture technology. Well, like I said, I'm using a Galaxy S4 right now to do this video. It has gesture technology to where I could do this or that, or we can go down to GameStop and pick up an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and get the Kinect and the cameras and whatnot, and we can use gesture technology for us to sit there and play the games where we no longer need controllers. So, the, the Play-Doh system opened up a lot of windows for us to explore. Well, what can we use for how to bring all about all the stuff that we have for today? Well, mostly anything you see nowadays or interact with deals with touchscreen technology. The Galaxy S4, your home security system, whenever you get something to order to eat, you can go down to Chili's right now, sit down at a table, and look at the screen, and whenever you sit down, you'll have a little 
CS or PS thing, whatever they want to call it. And you can order all your food, drinks, play games, and all that stuff right there at the table with a touch screen. It's all around us. Regardless if you go into a restaurant like McDonald's, whatnot, and you order food, you might not, not be using the touch screen. But they are. They're using the touch screen to sit there and put your food down, order your food, everything. So, touch screens are used in our daily lives every day. Now, believe it or not, back in 1993, that was the first actual touch screen phone. It was created by IBM and Bell South. This phone can do electronic mail, email, pager, calendar, appointment calendar, address book, calculator, pen based sketch pad. Kind of sounds like most touch phones today, or any tablet that you find today. They can do all of that now. Now we have the little phone or tablet that we use and can sit there and organize our whole entire day. And we just have to carry around that one little thing. Just imagine what happens if you lose it. You have to give a bunch of other stuff to actually take its place. But now, with technology and touchscreens, we can sit there and put all that stuff into one device to where it can help us out. Instead of going through all these stuff, so like a planner and write down all your stuff, you just sit there and hit your little phone, S Force. I want to schedule this time. This appointment, yada yada yada. It's new ways of technology for touch phones, or touch screens. So, people like Mac or Apple and Samsung have made it their business to develop touch screen technology. How can they make it better? How can, how can we use it in everyday life? Well, that's what we're looking at at present life. But what about the future? Well, like I said, Samsung, they have put together something called an SR, SUR40. And pretty much what it is, it's a 40 inch screen flat TV, and you can use it as a touch screen, but they made it into a table. So you can go into your friend's house. Oh, he's got a nice coffee table over there. But what you don't realize is, is that the SR40 or SUR40 is a touchscreen. Now, whenever Samsung first developed it, it was pretty much an overgrown tablet for 40 inches or whatnot. They wanted people, big businesses, to buy into it. So that way they can expand and have them use it for their businesses. So, what can we see for that? Well, some people called, actually took the risk for that. Some people actually did take the risk for that. And one of the people that actually did it, it's quite notable, is the Pizza Hut. Now, if you actually go to a real, real Pizza Hut, not a Pizza Hut that you just go in, order the food, and then you just go. No, I'm talking about an actual Pizza Hut where you can actually have pay where you can actually sit down and all that other stuff. Well, you go to the table. You look down. And on the table, you sit there and see a pizza. You actually create your own pizza. This is new. Back in 2012 is whenever they first started this project. And now to this day, now we got pizza with a table that we can actually order a pizza off of that's totally touch screen. What can we do? Well, what can we do for it? How can we expand upon it? These are all questions that we have to ask ourselves. Right now, also, there's something called foil, <clears throat> touch foil. But what is touch foil? Well, touch foil is pretty much where I can take any blank piece of glass, any of them. Any piece of glass. Apply film to it on the back, on whatever size it is. Okay? And then after that, I take a projector and beam it down onto the film, and guess what? That piece of glass now is touch screen. And so we sit there and 
that little thing over here, set it up, be in a bus stop or whatnot, set it up. I guess it can check our Facebook, do games, anything we want to program it to do. Anything. This is the future. Also, there are some pieces of glass that you can get where they uh, follow you all around. They can do this because look at a smart house, Bill Gates. You can sit there and pick up a pen, put it on, and just walk through the whole entire house. You can be reading a newspaper, and it'll sit there and follow you throughout the whole screen of the windows. It follows you everywhere, even, even with your music and everything. Alright? We use touch, touch screen technology almost everywhere that we go. Regardless of us or other people. But what does that mean for us? Well, touch screens are the way of the future. We are going to have touch screens in our lives, if we like it or not. Most of the stuff that we can do with touch screens are quite amazing. Quite. Okay? Right now they have technology to where they're working on to where Whirlpool is coming up with an induction, <clears throat> induction cooktop. What's so special about this induction cooktop is that this cooktop will be able to cook your food and off to the side. You can sit there and check your email, YouTube, anything. So that way you, as the user, can look at it. You can sit there and cook your food, watch the YouTube channel or how to cook this right there. And since it's induction cooking, I can sit there and take the pot off, put my hand there, and I won't get burned. Induction cooking heats up the metal. It doesn't hurt you. There's no flames, no electricity, nothing like that. It's all done on the magnet system. That's the stuff, type of stuff that we're going for. So if we could do that with the stove top, turn it into a touch screen, what else can we do with it? Well, Samsung has come out with a T9000 refrigerator that has a 10 inch display for a touch screen. Who knew? So, touch screens are out there. We like it or not. They're going to be out there for a while. This is the, our future. Our future is going to be to where we go into a house and it's going to look like Tony Stark's, where you have all that technology. Or Bill Gates, depending on how rich you are. But Bill Gates, Gates' house is a testing ground for this new technology. Now, how can we get a smart house like that with touch screens? Well, ADT Pulse now has it to where you can actually uh, get a system to where you get a touch screen thing and mobile access. And you can sit there and check everything from your, either your mobile phone, which will most likely be a touch screen, or you can sit there and check it from that uh, security console. And this would do video monitoring, motion section motion detection and other stuff that you would see in the movies. So, what do you think is going to happen in the next 10, 20 years? We're probably going to advance better than we are now with the test screen and in the next 50 to 100 years it could quite possibly be where we're actually in the type of stuff that we see in uh, what type of movie? Minority Report, or the new remake of Total Recall, you never know. CES 2014, this year, as a demo for what Whirlpool is trying to do with test screen technology and inventing cooktops. 
These are being shown everywhere. They're in the stages of being concepts to being in reality. The question is, is how soon will we be able to use them and at what cost? Because wouldn't it be nice to be able to touch the table, read the newspaper or your email, and then flip it up on top of the window and be able to read that while looking out and watching over your kids or the car or whatever? It would be nice. Think about it. Thank you for listening.